Network Academia, or rather, the darling of the internet. <laughs> Welcome back to Real Among Popular Opinions. Today you will indeed be hearing about an unpopular opinion. You can see the title. You know why we're here. I've dressed in my most pretentious possible self to do this because I just want to do this the once <laughs> because I never want to talk about this book again. So I had my mother and a friend and I think another person on the internet that it's not exactly a friend but you get the idea. I asked people to give me questions so I can talk about the secret history because I did not know how to articulate and how to go about reviewing this book in a proper way that it deserves, although I do not believe it deserves <laughs> this kind of treatment and its own video, but let's do it specifically because of the questions. Let's just give props to everyone who gave me the questions because I would have never come up with this on my own. So, the secret history, the darling of the internet, the darling of everyone who reads books, of everyone who likes learning, knowledge, and of everyone on TikTok. <laughs> Because I think it's one of the most popular things on TikTok that you can see even if you don't like books. And I'm not on TikTok for the books, so the fact that I've seen videos with this is truly astounding. But yes, we have it. It is here. I've put five tabs in. It's a beautiful print, smooth, thin pages. It's a wonderful, stunning object. Let's now devour the story and talk about why the hell I have this unpopular opinion. I will run you through an intro to explain my preconceived notions about this genre in general, and then we can get into the actual book. Now, you need to understand one thing. I do not like this genre. I do not like what it's about. I do not like what it wants to talk about, how it wants to talk about it. I just like the aesthetic. If someone asked me if I liked Dark Academia, I would say yes, but I would mostly have films in mind and mood boards and like an overall desire for self-learning and specific knowledge and just the pursuit of all things literary. <sighs> Do I actually like the literature that is supposed to be within the genre? This is where I hit a brick wall because I enjoy watching it. I think the most notorious, and I say that with sarcasm because it's one of my favorite movies of all time, within the genre is Dead Poets Society. <sighs> now, The Secret History, I would watch the film because a lot of the things that are really boring to read about would look good. If you got the right actors, and the aesthetics of the university, I think this would be a fantastic film to watch. Would it be one you thought about after it finished? Not really, but at least it would be a joy to watch. It was not a joy to read. So, while I do think it fits within the aesthetic, I would never, never, never <laughs> recommend it as a book. So we're going to need to separate the two for a minute to allow me to make my argument. <laughs> because we are being studious about this. I was a language student in high school. I read a lot of classics and a lot of like representative literature. So we're pulling out all the stops for this video, but dark academia as a genre, as an aesthetic, as a state of mind is something very different to the literature and topics discussed, if that makes any sense to you. So while I do like the aesthetic and the vibes, and I would watch a film about it, I don't think I'll ever read another book in the genre again. Now let's get into the actual secret history. I think you've learned of my <laughs> doubt about ever liking this book, and here's the thing I want it to. It was just very appealing, but there was two, there were two problems before I got into the book. One was that I didn't expect to like it, and the second was that I knew it had unlikable characters, which is the bane of my existence in literature. So <laughs> there were not, the odds were stacked against me, and somehow 
I was even more angry than I thought I would be. So, angry isn't the right word, just disappointed. Now, this behemoth of an item <laughs> deserves its own questions. I think there are 10-ish. And some of them will be a little bit salty, fair warning, because if you're a fan of this book, I don't think you'd want to watch this video anyway. I don't watch videos about people roasting my favorite books because why would I want to do that to myself? But you are amongst friends if you did not like this book. This is all in Croatian, by the way, so I'm going to do my best translating the questions, but it might sound a little bit weird. How many memorable scenes can you list? Tell them to me. I think this one was my mother's question. Memorable scenes. Now, I did this intentionally where I took a step back and waited a little bit before making this video. I don't even remember when I read The Secret History. I want to say April. It could have been May. But it's been too long in my brain. A lot has happened since then. I do not remember anything. So if I had to list notable scenes, I don't think I would have one. It's all just such a mush inside my brain where I just remember slogging through that I don't I can't say that I have a memorable scene. And before we get deeper into the video, I will say one thing. If you are someone who's here to just bitch about the fact that I didn't like it, I pretty much know everything that's like the counter argument to my video. You could be like, they're meant to be unlikable. This is meant to be this way. This isn't meant to be explained. This is meant to be pretentious. This is meant to be like, I pretty much know everything that's a counter argument. Doesn't help. Doesn't help because the book was boring. And I think the most like the biggest cardinal sin of literature is when a book is boring because it didn't make me angry. I was angry with myself for finishing it. Yes, Cersei made me angry. I wanted to throw that book outside the window. This one, I just wanted to never read again. I was bored. I was bored out of my mind because halfway through the book, the quote unquote mystery is dealt with and then it's just a slog. It's just a slog and I was like, please, let this end. Let my misery be finished. So let's keep going with the questions. Does the book have a strong female character? The book has one female character, which is again funny because it was written by a woman. And again, the counter argument could be that's the point because this is supposed to be pretentious academia and that's mostly white boys. All right, it's still fiction. There are plenty of pretentious women. You could have put more women in. There was no reason why it's just white boys. You could have put a lot of women in because a lot of women are pretentious. A lot of women suck. And you could have made that point here. But let's now go into the choices of Donna Tart. So there's one female character of note. Strong is not the word I would use, but dull would be because everything you assume about her will be true. Everything you assume about a situation she is in is true, at least in my case, which is another thing about this book being boring. It was so predictable. If you've read more than two books in your lifetime or watched TV shows, nothing in this book is surprising. There are no twists. Everything you expect to happen will happen. Now, I will try and keep spoilers out of this video, but I'm not sure how to be vague about this. so. While I hold the paper up, don't, <laughs> don't listen if you don't care for spoilers, but every time I would read something, I'd be like, oh, there's a secret there? Great. It's probably so-and-so. It always turned out to be so-and-so. I was like, oh, they're doing a ritual, aren't they? Oh, they killed someone, didn't they? Oh, he's sleeping with his sister, isn't he? And every time it, <laughs> I turned out to be right, and I was just so bored because I kept expecting Donna Tartt to prove me wrong, that I just is am not a person who has seen this too many times, <laughs> which might be on me, might be on me. But this book isn't so old. Like you can't give it, like you can't grant it leave because it was written 150 years ago when people were a lot more gullible. It was written in the 90s. <laughs> that, well, that is not that long ago. That's like a decade before I was born. It's not that long ago. So I don't know what kind of gullible audience she expected to have. I am not part of it because what? Oh, Ju Julian is their cult leader. I am shocked. Julian knew what was happening all along. I am shocked. Like the whole thing was just, 
exhausting. Exhausting is the word I was looking for. I'm going on tangents, by the way. None of this is organized, as you can see. We need to keep going because... <clears throat> Do you think you'll remember anything about this book after 10 years? Yes, I will remember how overhyped it was. <laughs> Because there are so many books that are trying to be presented as like, everyone will like this, regardless of genre, everyone will like this. And apparently it's always me who has to be like, I will prove you wrong. I will prove you wrong. And before anyone says like, you just want to hate on the books because they're popular. No, I never would have read this book if it wasn't popular. So it does get people to pick it up. There's definitely that like, pick up ability. I never would have considered reading this if it wasn't so popular. Everyone wants to know what the fuss is all about and no one wants to be disappointed because there's nothing better than liking something that has so much fan art and so many aesthetics and songs and believe me, when you enter a fandom with none of that, <laughs> you will have wished that you liked the popular thing because there will be an endless stream of content for you. No one wants to go into a book and hate it. Except when I read Sanderson, that's besides the point. <sighs> what part of the book was slow paced and what happens <laughs> during the slow paced part? All of it. But let's not get into the nitpicky bits. Slow paced, the middle, definitely the middle. Because at least in the beginning, you have kind of the incident that you're waiting to happen so you have some kind of anticipation after it happens you just want it to end you just want it to end because you realize that whatever point was to be made should have been made then and there it's just a slog it's just where they go and what they do is no longer mysterious is no longer interesting because you already know what they did and now you're just kind of following the aftermath but Imagine having an exciting series and instead of it being the finale, imagine that the finale happens in the middle of the series and then the rest of the season is just the characters like walking around and thinking about the finale. <laughs> and I don't think that would be engaging television. It was not an engaging read. I stopped reading for like a couple weeks after the middle of the book when the thing happens. It's not a spoiler. They kill their friend in the first page of the book. After they do that, I just stopped reading and if I didn't want to see how it wrapped up, I never would have finished it. Again, the whole popular thing. If I didn't want to see what the fuss was about, I never would have finished it. Talk about the, <laughs> yeah, talk about the plot and the outcome as fast as you can. All right, <laughs> let's, let's attempt this. A character comes to university joins pretentious group of people, follows them around, becomes like them. I think that sums it up. <laughs> it's a couple sentences. I think that that sums it up Pr pretty well. Th there's nothing about it. They're all unlikable. There's sentence six. Which two characters were your most, in were most interesting and you would like to hear more about them? Now, I... I don't know if this is un unpopular or popular. I didn't want to hear anything else about this book after I finished it, but Bunny might have been my favorite character. And that is because this book is a contest of who you like the least. That is why I don't like unlikable characters because when you have an unlikable cast, you're pretty much competing for who's the worst. So you can like hate them the most and be then be like, okay, but who's the most redeemable of these awful people? And then you just kind of attach to them. They all suck, just so we're clear. But the reason that I liked Bunny is because <laughs> throughout all the craft that he was doing, he had a genuine reason for it. Just for context, also none of this is a spoiler. I feel like none of this book is a spoiler except for maybe the ending because they tell you everything in the beginning. He's the only one of them who's not rich anymore so he kind of mooches off them and they really hate him for it because he also insults them and stuff i mean the main character isn't rich rich either but it's not that big of a plot point for him but bunny kept insulting the crap out of them while still living off their money and honestly i kind of stand because they're insufferable to hang out with but at least he got some cash out of it at least he went on trips and stuff but i was actually slightly upset 
when I realized they were going to kill him because I felt so sorry for him. If you look at all of the these irredeem irredeemable, awful, unlikable, gray characters, I actually felt sorry for him the most because all of them throughout all the crap at least had a family to go back to and money to cushion them because whatever happened to them, they were going to be fine. He wasn't. So I actually felt kind of sorry for him. Bunny turned out to be my favorite character, which I think, yes, is the goal that you kind of feel sorry for the one kid that they do kill. But I also feel like none of them were really made to be likable. So it might be a little bit unpopular. And the second one is Henry, but not for the reasons you might think. I found him a little bit re relatable. I Most of the quotes that I marked in the book, I think are Henry's because they sounded relatable to me. But him as a character turned out to be so disappointingly predictable and boring as well that it was just not not there. <laughs> if you were to change something about the story, what would it be? <laughs> I would actually make it have a point. I would make it have a point because I thought she would make some sort of point at the end, to be very honest. But we're all looking through the lens of Richard. Is that the main character's name? Richard? I think it is. And he learns nothing <laughs> at the end of the book. We just walk away with a sense of, oh, I mean, he's one of them now. And if the whole message of the book was rich people kind of suck and when they're bored, they do bad things. I feel like it was layered so thick that it just becomes incomprehensible because there's a point when you making a point about something just becomes you ex obsessively writing about it because I think we didn't need 600 pages to know that these people suck and then at the end you don't even make a point about it because our main character ends the book like them and it just felt entirely pointless because the reader didn't attach to anything and the reader didn't learn anything if that was the point it's just <laughs> Books about ma books making a point about unlikable characters do need to show that they think they're unlikable characters. But if you end the book where I just spent 600 pages reading about these people and then nothing happened to them, I'm kind of like, do you like these characters? Do you like potentially actually enjoy writing about these characters? Because to make the point that you wanted to make, you didn't need 600 pages. You definitely didn't need that long. That Does that mean you enjoyed actually writing about them? Which is alarming. Because they're awful. <laughs> That's the problem that I have with unlikable characters in general. Because I feel like very often the... You can have unlikable characters in good books. But books about unlikable characters. It's pretty obvious that the author actually likes them. And really enjoys writing about them. Which isn't something that interests me. So at the end of this book I was just like Donna... Um, if you had permission to write a thousand pages about these people, you would. You definitely would, wouldn't you? <laughs> I'm getting rambly, aren't I? <laughs> I've been keeping this in for weeks. <sighs> who would you recommend this book to and why? I would recommend this book to anyone who's interested in, who's interested in trying out the genre because I think if you read this book, you will definitely know what the genre is about and why this kind of literature is recommended. Because essentially it boils down to pathetic, unlikable, <laughs> gray, even though I hate that word, and terrible people. So if you read this, I feel like you will have a very good impression of what the rest of the books are like. I'm sure there are better ones out there, but this is the most popular one for a reason. And if you're interested, I would give it a try to know what it's all about. Do you like Dark Academia as a genre and would you ever write something like it? I wouldn't <laughs> because I need to like a character in order to write about them. At least as main characters. I can't have an unlikable protagonist because I would just stop writing. I also feel like sometimes authors need to have a lot of self-loathing to be in the head of someone this terrible. But I don't like the genre. I think we went over this at the beginning of the video so <laughs> I might just cut myself off here before I rant 
further. So the secret history, one or two stars. I did say I reserved one stars for books I viscerally hated on a personal level. So I think that I gave this two stars, but primarily I am deeply disappointed because I thought I would at least, at least be entertained and I was not. This was boring. It was a slog to get through. It was a painful process and if not for the popularity I never would have finished this ever ever would have finished this I do not like a single character I forgot what half of them are called I did have times when I thought the writing is very nice like the paragraph is very nice this description of the college is very nice this would make a great movie but if you have better things to do <laughs> then don't waste your time on this book. Just look up two reviews on Goodreads and they will tell you everything that you need to know. And I think everything that the book wanted to do, it didn't do. You could argue that she was trying to be subtle and that she doesn't want to spell anything out for you. But while reading this book, you do wonder, obviously these people are terrible, but there has to be a reason why this woman spent 600 pages writing about them. You're not really sure whether the point she wants to make is a positive or negative one because you leave the book thinking that she really likes these characters. <laughs> but she obviously doesn't because she thinks they're terrible. There was just no reason for it to be that long. That's my, that's my point. And if you want to talk about rich people being crappy and awful people, which I think everyone knows at this point, I do think there are better ways to do it. So... That's kind of it for my mini rant on the secret history. If anyone has other comments, I would love to discuss this because it's been such a while since I read like a really, really popular book and got to dive into it. And there's no one actually more disappointed than me that I didn't like this because it's a stunning book. It is a stunning book, a stunning copy. I would have liked nothing more than to enjoy this and to rant about it because it just feels like it feels like an aesthetic book, but it is not if you read it, if that makes any sense. So I would have loved to enjoy this. And instead, it's boring and forgettable, which is the worst crime that a piece of literature can commit. So I will see you in the next video.